Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Vessalatu vesselamu ala seyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmaîn. Allahumme allimna ma yanfa'una ve anfa'ana bima 'allamtana ve zidna ilman nafi'a. Allahumme arinal hakka hakkan ve arzukna ittiba'a. Ve arinal batıla batılan ve arzukna ictinabe. Rabbi şirahli sadri ve yassirli emri. Ve ahlul uqudata min lisani yafqahu qavli. Esselamu aleykum ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuh. Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bediüzzaman Said Nursi podcast series. This is Mustafa Tuna. You can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org. In this episode, inshallah, we will continue reading and hopefully, inshallah, finishing the 14th uh, word. We read the uh, original section of this treatise, which was about um, showing the miraculous wisdom in some of the verses and some prophetic traditions that have been uh, subject to challenges by people who have not understood the meaning of the actual, uh, the higher exalted meaning of those verses and uh, and uh, prophetic traditions and also showing simultaneously the miraculousness of those verses and um, prophetic traditions. And we transitioned from that to this discussion of um how we live in a purposeful world a world where things are not random but are acts of the creator and that is the case everything that we see that we hear that we can sense that we can um, think of right these are all uh, think of in a reasonable way these are all creation of the creator the creation of allah the creation of god and god does not do anything uh, you know without a purpose in a in a futile way there is purpose in everything that he does there there is wisdom in everything he does now the problem sometimes is that we pay lip service to this we acknowledge it we say of course right god created everything there is his, his will and volution, uh, absolute will and volution involved in the, uh, in the choice of everything to be in the way that it is, etc. But then as, as we live our lives, we forget about it. We live as if things are just there. And they just happen. Right? Now, one of the places where this becomes somewhat controversial is in the case of uh, disasters. Disasters that perhaps... You know, cause the uh, the the death of many people, among them innocent innocent uh, individuals, sometimes young children, babies, and then we think, you know, is this a purposeful act by the Creator too? Perhaps even then, we we don't have so much objection. We can say, oh, if everything is this this too should be, but then the question becomes. Is this, does this have a message for us? Now, everything in the creation have messages for us. At the least, they are signs of creation. So sometimes there is an extra message that is that these uh, disasters or personal uh, you know, tribulations, personal calamities, personal uh, troubles that we go through, right? All of these have messages and it is important for us to get used to uh, perceiving the world in a way in which we first first acknowledge uh, that, that that this is a uh, meaningful world, that it is full of messages for us, and that we need to adjust our actions accordingly, right? And once we get used to it, once we start to practice in small things, then seeing that reality in big things like earthquakes or uh, you know hurricanes um, does not become as as 
difficult. And the good thing about this is once we understand that it's something like an earthquake in which sometimes thousands of people, sometimes millions of people uh, die, and that this is an act, a volitional act of the creator, right? Then we start to see that although it seems, on the face of it, it seems that, you know, some individuals, their innocent ones died, and, you know, this may not be, this may not feel fair to us. We understand that it is the act of the creator, and the creator has boundless bounties. Those who suffer in in situations like this, you know, war is another situation, right? And those who suffer in situations like this will be compensated. In the big picture, God tells us that he is just. And if he tells us that he is just, we believe that he is just. And we also believe that he is merciful. The just one does not wrong anybody. And the merciful goes even beyond that. And he is also generous. Right? He gives without bounds. So those who suffer because of disasters and other situations like this in this world, in the, in the hereafter, when they see the rewards, the compensation that they are offered in return, will be happy. And those who see that will be envious. They will, they will think, you know, if only we, we also suffered some things like this in the, in the, you know, short, brief world where we were before we came here to the real uh, and eternal abode. So we have been talking about this, uh, and uh, the particular section that Ustad Nursi has written about this was in in relation to uh, and in response to the questions he had received uh, following earthquakes in Turkey in the 1940s, one in a city called Erzincan in eastern Turkey and another in a city called uh, Izmir, uh, which is on the Aegean coast. We read uh, five questions that he was asked and he says that these questions came from a metaphysical direction indicating that his, this was an experience that he had had. It, it was not necessarily his students, etc. asking, but it probably was, or these probably were questions in the minds of many people. Therefore, uh, he, uh, he, he was you know, used as the channel for, for the enlightenment, illumination of the minds of the people at the time. Inshallah, today we will continue reading the sixth uh, question, the answer to the sixth question, and then I'm hoping that we will get to the seventh one too and finish this. We will see. Bismillah. Oh, as a reminder, a rough translation of the text we will be reading is posted at the website www.reflections-rn.org. Uh, all you need to do is to Go to the website and podcasts under that words in the words 14th word and then scroll down to the section uh, that we are reading in this episode inshallah so bismillah beşinci sual adil ve rahim kadir ve hakim neden hususi hatalara hususi ceza vermeyip koca bir unsuru musallat eder bu hal cemal rahmetine ve şumulü kudretine nasıl muvafık düşer Fifth question, why is the just, the merciful, the all-powerful, and the all-wise not meeting out specific punishments for specific mistakes, but causing a mighty element to assault? How can this situation be compatible with the beauty of his mercy and the scope of his power? El-Cevap Kadir-i Zülcelal her bir unsura çok vazifeler vermiş, ve her bir vazifede çok neticeler verdiriyor. Bir unsurun bir tek vazifesinde bir tek neticesi çirkin ve şer ve musibet olsa da sair güzel neticeler bu neticeyi de güzel hükmüne getirir. The answer. The majestic all powerful one, God, has given many duties to each element and has has them yield many outcomes in each duty. So imagine the, uh, you know, we, we went over this before, the air molecule, right? Each, or air, the, the atom is in air. Each, each of those atoms, the oxygen, hydrogen, whatever, each of those 
atoms are doing so many things conveying uh, sounds conveying other vibrations conveying uh, the, or, or entering the bodies of human beings and carrying oxygen or entering into the leaves of plants etc so many things just just one atom say oxygen doing so many different things and has them yield many outcomes in each duty even if one outcome is in one of the tasks of an element so it's doing many things even if one of those things one outcome in one of the tasks of an element is ugly and evil and it is a tribulation the other beautiful outcomes render this outcome in effect beautiful too so look at the big picture right eğer bu tek çirkin netice vücuda gelmemek için insana karşı hiddete gelmiş o unsur o vazifeden men edilse o vakit o güzel neticeler adedince hayırlar terk edilir ve lüzumlu bir hayır yapmamak şer olması haysiyetiyle o hayırlar adedince şerler yapılır. Ta bir tek şer gelmesin gibi gayet çirkin ve hilafı hikmet bir hilafı hakikat bir hilafı hikmet ve hilafı hakikat bir kusurdur. Now if that element raging against the human being was banned from that duty in order to prevent this ugly outcome from coming into existence then many goods to the number of those beautiful outcomes would be abandoned right they it is doing one task one action and that action has let's say a hundred outcomes one of them is from our point of view in the big picture even that's not the case but from our point of view one of them has an has something that's negative about it but if we were to avoid that one negative thing in order to, uh, if we were to uh, avoid that action altogether in order to avoid that one negative thing we would be then uh, preventing 99 goods from coming into existence too right since not doing a necessary good is evil, then many evils to the number of those goods would have been committed, would have been committed in order to avoid a single evil, and this would be an utmostly ugly defect, contrary to wisdom and contrary to reality. The the situation we see in in the reality out there, right, is not like this. The God is wise. God created reality and in reality what we see is that these tasks are being fulfilled even though there may be some apparent from again from our point of view uh, negative things that are attached to 99 positive things kudret ve hikmet ve hakikat kusurdan münezzehtirler madem bir kısım hatalar unsurları ve arzı hiddete getirecek derecede bir şümullü isyandır ve çok mahlukatın hukukuna bir tahkirli tecavüzdür. Elbette o cinayetin fevkalade çirkinliğini göstermek için koca bir unsura külli vazifesi içinde onları terbiye et diye emir verilmesi aynı hikmettir ve adalettir ve mazlumlara aynı rahmettir. So divine power, divine wisdom and, and reality are above and beyond defect. There is no defect, there is no fault, there is no deficiency. Right? In reality and in the divine wisdom and in the divine power that brings that reality into existence. As we said many times before, reality is beautiful. It is beautiful because the one who brings it into existence is beautiful and he is all powerful and all wise. Since some mistakes are rebellions with a scope broad enough to cause the rage of the elements and the earth, and they are insulting infringements on the rights of many creatures, of course, in order to show the extraordinary ugliness of that crime, a mighty element will be commanded within the context of its universal duty, discipline them. And this is, this is very wisdom and justice, as well as very mercy, for the oppressed sometimes the crimes that the human beings commit are so big that that the elements become enraged enraged against them 
and God commands them okay go ahead this is in the context of your universal duty you know sometimes you need to shake in order to you know get things to where they belong to the surface of the earth or the the um atmosphere sometimes you need to have a hurricane to you know clean the air and you know, serving many other purposes that you know e one who studies ecology would know some of those purposes and there might be purposes that are beyond our ability to recognize too right so some rebellions have a scope broad enough to cause the rage of the elements and the earth and importantly they are insulting infringements on the rights of many creatures we don't recognize the gravity of some of the things that we do say think believe the gravity of attributing things to other than god had we known had we had we been able to recognize the gravity of that as it is we would not find any unfairness in the rage that these elements and the surface of the earth and the, the elements of the air and etc etc are showing against that we just don't see our eyes are veiled we just don't see the gravity of that and many other things altıncı sual zelzele küreyi arzın içinde inkılabat madeniyenin neticesi olduğunu ehli gaflet işaa edip adeta tesadüfi ve tabii ve maksatsız bir hadise nazarıyla bakarlar. Bu hadisenin manevi esbabını ve neticelerini görmüyorlar, ta ki intibaha gelsinler. Bunların istinad ettiği maddenin bir hakikati var mıdır? Sixth question. The people of heedlessness publicize that earthquake is the outcome of changes in the mineral masses of the globe of the earth. And they consider it as if it is coincidental natural and purposeless they do not see the metaphysical causes and outcomes of this phenomenon so that they would become awakened does the matter that they rely on have a reality matter the you know, mineral masses in the in the globe of the earth uh, this relates to the uh, magma the lava that comes from the uh, volcanic mountains and you know when this happens when in the in case of volcanic eruptions of course there are earthquakes so some people apparently at the time were saying you know this is what happens under the ground and uh, you know when the, the the lava or magma moves under the ground you know things happen the earth moves and then earthquake happens etc etc of course another uh, you know physical cause that is related or associated with earthquakes is the uh, fault lines the breaking of large uh, masses of rocks uh, layers under the ground either way it doesn't make a big difference right these are both material uh, circumstances and the question is can we attribute causality to them it is not that you know is this happening at the time of the earthquake it is is this why the earthquake is happening el cevap dalaletten başka hiçbir hakikati yoktur çünkü her sene 50 milyondan ziyade münakkaş muntazam gömlekleri giyen ve değiştiren küreyi arzın üstünde binler envaın bir tek nevi olan mesela sinek taifesinden hadsiz efradından bir tek ferdin Yüze razasından bir tek uzvu olan kanadının kast ve irade ve meşiyet ve hikmet cilvesine mazhariyeti ve ona lakayt kalmaması ve başıboş bırakmaması gösteriyor ki değil hadsiz şuurun beşiği ve anası ve merci ve hamisi olan koca küreyi arzın ehemmiyetli ef'al ve ahvali belki hiçbir şeyi cüz'i olsun külli olsun irade ve ihtiyar ve kast ilahi haricinde olmaz. Fakat Kadir mutlak hikmetinin muktezasıyla zahir esbabı tasarrufatına perde ediyor. Zelzeleyi irade ettiği vakit bazen de bir madeni harekete emredip ateşlendiriyor. Answer. It has no reality other than misguidance. So is it the fault line that's breaking that caused the earthquake? Is it the magma that is moving under the ground and erupting to 
the surface or maybe not erupting to the surface but moving things that has no reality other than misguidance once again the question is is the magma or is the breaking of the fault line i.e is the material circumstance that is associated with the earthquake the cause of the earthquake it is not whether that too exists alongside the earthquake right this is about the attribution of causality and which is a very deep and interesting uh, philosophical uh, question uh, to which the the mutakallimun the theologians of islam have found really beautiful and convincing and comprehensive uh, answers so they have the, the question is answered but it comes up again in the uh, european philosophical tradition in the during the enlightenment and especially you know david hume asks the question again and he must have read uh, the writings of imam ghazali because he uses the same examples and he leaves it without an answer and you know that is a problem that western philosophy has not been able to resolve yet i mean they have found answers but those answers create created more questions and and uh, concealed more than exposed and explained uh, so it, it it is a it is a problem it's an ongoing uh, problem we don't have that problem we believe in god and we have the ability to to attribute everything to uh, the one creator who is all powerful does everything does whatever he wants and has absolute will etc etc absolute knowledge right so that that solves the problem uh, but when people don't want to admit that because if they admit it they have to also think about so what does this creator want from me how am i supposed to live my life right so they because they don't want to uh, submit to the beautiful and and protective and happiness uh, giving um, norms that the creator expects from us they they move on to try to deny the existence of of uh, the the creator and then they end up with these problems and to solve those problems they they um, in a sense move into a mode of heedlessness or oversight in which they don't acknowledge the problems that are that naturally uh, necessarily come up with the with the assumption of causality between material circumstances or between things in the world so they say the magma caused the earthquake or the breaking of the fault line caused the earthquake uh, but there is we, we we do we we see the magma i mean if we see or let's make it simpler take two billiard balls one ball moves hits the other the other ball moves right we see the let's make the first one red and the second one white we see the red ball moving we see the red ball stopping uh where the white wall starts a white ball starts and then we see the white ball move so we see the red ball moving and then the white ball moving but we do not see the red ball moving the white ball because as the white ball is starts to move the red ball is, is stopping and it is not touching the white ball any longer so what's happening so this is a big question i you know it it creates a lot of problems uh, we have solved that problem a long time ago but people who have not been able to solve the problem just choose not to see the problem right they say the magma caused the earthquake so Ustad Nursi says it has no reality other than misguidance because that the wing which is one among the hundreds of organs of a single individual among the species of fly or flies which is one among the thousands of species on the globe of the earth and then the earth which changes more than 50 million embroidered and orderly orderly um, shirts every year so imagine the earth right every spring uh, 
I mean, this is this is easier to easiest to see in the uh, in the spring, right? If, if the the surface of the earth changes. Those dry trees now have leaves. Then the leaves become bigger. Some of them have flowers. Some of them will have fruits, right? It is as if it is putting on a new shirt. And then you can think like every tree is putting on a new shirt. Every field, every mountain skirt, every mountain top, every forest is putting on a new shirt. So Earth, which changes more than 50 million embroidered and orderly shirts every year, right? But now we need to go back. On that face of the Earth, we thought about the species, uh, many species of living beings. And then among them, we thought about the fly as one species. Among them, we thought of, of one fly individual fly right and then we thought about the wing of that fly right so that wing is the locus of appearance of appearance mazhar is the word in turkish and it's a difficult word but locus of appearance is a good translation right that wing of a fly Right? But you need to keep in mind, this fly is just one among those billions of trillions of innumerable things. That wing is the um, locus of appearance for the manifestation of purpose, will, divine designation, and wisdom. Imagine a wing, the wing of a fly. What an amazing thing it is. First, it is a living object. It, it was, you know, tiny, perhaps microscopically small at one point while the fly was in the egg, and then it grew. And then it is constantly nourished. So there are these veins in it that, that move uh, the, the blood of the fly and constantly refresh it, right? And then it moves. And it moves in such a way that it enables with used when when the other wing also comes into the uh, to, to its help together that enable this the body of this fly to fly to move in air it is also beautiful it is an amazing thing how can you say that this is coincidental this is purposeless it has a purpose it is serving the purpose of you know letting the fly fly so that it can go to its food and, and fulfill other functions, right? Be a some, somewhere else. Ustad Nursi uh, uses this uh, this example, right? It it it it is a it is like an airplane for angels to get on and travel the earth and see and and glorify God, right? So it is purposeful. That single wing is the locus of appearance for the manifestation of purpose, will divine designation and wisdom and that they remain that they do not remain indifferent to it and leave it alone so that purpose will divine designation and wisdom and the owner of that right that he does not remain indifferent to it that wing and leave it alone shows that nothing whether particular or universal whether it is a small thing like the wing of a fly or the wings of all flies whether it's a particular like a fly right or the species of fly or all the animal beings all the animal species whether it is a particular like thing like the animal species or all created beings right nothing nothing is left alone nothing whether particular or universal remains outside of divine will, divine volition and intent, let alone the important actions and states of the massive globe of the earth. The, the wing of a fly is not left outside of the, the uh, comprehension of divine will, volition and intent. How can, how can the actions and states of the massive globe of the earth be left alone? The massive globe of the earth, which is the cradle, mother, refuge, and protector of innumerable, innumerable conscious beings. 
So the globe of the earth and all of its actions and states have purposes, are the acts of the volitional acts of a, a creator who is the creator of everything, that is God, right? And therefore, suggesting that something as simple as the motion movement of the magma under the ground is the cause of this thing and stopping that is problematic now the absolute all-powerful one god right the god who is the al-qadir right qadir mutlaq absolute all-powerful one makes apparent causes a veil before his disposals as entailed by his wisdom so we are not saying that the causes are not there we are not saying that the you know fault line did not break or the magma did not move or the red ball did not hit the white ball what we are saying is these are acts of the all-powerful one all-powerful creator but due to a wisdom he makes those apparent causes i.e things that precede something else in a predictable way or in a pattern way or in a regular way right those apparent causes he makes them a veil a veil before his disposals and as far as that knows, he explains this he says the causes should be like transparent veils imagine a uh, or, or curtains imagine a you know half transparent curtain if you look through the holes of the curtain you see what's behind it but if you focus on the weft and weft of the, the the fiber of the curtain if you focus your attention on that fiber you don't see what is behind it so the causes in this world are like that curtain they are there for a purpose and we will talk about that but they are not there for us to focus right so what is the uh, the the wisdom well one thing is you know imagine yourself looking at the sun can you look at the sun when the sun is at the highest point on a clear day you cannot it is so bright that you cannot look at the sun sometimes you need to use filters so divine power is so powerful divine light is so bright divine mercy is so beautiful that they are beyond our ability to comprehend so we need these curtains uh, that that serve us serve as filters to enable us see their manifestations we don't see them directly but we see their manifestations thanks to these curtains now another thing is this is a world of testing and trial if there was no veil if the veil was all lifted if there were no curtains right it could not be a test and trial if we saw our lord in the way that inshallah we are promised uh, we will see him and however that seeing might be we do not know right but we know that we will see his countenance in paradise if we were seeing our lord the way we will see him his countenance in paradise right now could we could we deny him could we deny his existence if we were bewildered by his majesty and beauty in the way that inshallah we will be in paradise could we even think of disobeying him or even think of doing anything but worshiping him we could not but there is a test and trial we are um, creatures who have partial will and we are here to witness his his signs of creation his signs in the creation as his man the manifestation of his names and attributes and ultimately his divine entity and appreciate the beauty majesty and perfection in them 
and worship him as as true appreciators you know they the angels also also appreciate and glorify god but they do not have the ability to not appreciate it is not a choice it is um it's as if it is automatic for us that's not the case right and that comes with the test and trial so there's there's a big wisdom in this the causes are attached to effects but we need to take the step to understand that all of this cannot be by itself with a superficial look by focusing on the you know the the fiber of the curtain you may think that this is happening by itself but look deeper you know take that step and he is also sending us messengers to say look don't be deceived by what you are saying listen carefully have a pure heart look at the matter with an objectify and you will see you will certainly see that there's a creator and now once you acknowledge the creator do not walk about the earth as if he is not doing what you are seeing he is the one who is doing what you are doing uh, seeing and he does not do anything in a purposeless meaningless way there is meaning in everything that he does because he has will and volition right and everything as a result that you are seeing around here is the consequences of his intent his his the, the purpose that he ascribes to things but because he makes them veils when he wills the earthquake he sometimes commands a mineral into motion and fires it up under the ground and then we see the you know, volcanic mountain erupting or other things haydi madeni inkılabat dahi olsa yine emir ve hikmet ilahi ile olur başka olamaz say even if it is changes in the masses of mineral under the ground that still takes place on the place on the divine command you know following the divine command and according to divine wisdom that it cannot be otherwise mesela bir adam bir tüfekle birini vurdu vuran adama hiç bakılmasa yalnız fişekteki barutun ateş alması noktasına hasrı nazar edip bir çare maktulün büsbütün hukukunu zayi etmek ne derece belahet ve divaneliktir aynen öyle de kadir zülcelal'in musahhar bir memuru belki bir gemisi bir tayyaresi olan küreyi arzın içinde bulunan ve hikmet ve irade ile iddihar edilen bir bombayı efli gahle, gaflet ve tuyanı uyandırmak için ateşlendir diye olan emri rabbaniyi unutmak ve te- tabiata sapmak hamakatin en eşneyidir so uh, let's repeat the sentence we read before and then continue because there's an example coming say even if it is changes in the masses of mineral etc that still takes place following the divine command and according to divine wisdom it cannot be otherwise for example say a man shot someone with a rifle what a foolishness and lunacy it would be if the man who shot is not considered at all and the rights of the helpless victim who is murdered are completely wasted by focusing attention on the ignition of gunpowder in the bullet bullet casing alone so a bullet you know fired and and moved and hit the victim and the victim died and the prosecutor comes to the scene and says well it is because the uh, gunpowder in the bullet casing uh, ignited that this bullet moved and killed this man what can we do you know the bullet is not a, a conscious being does not have intention does not you know cannot even be punished it's not going to perceive the punishment what can we do sorry the man died like would you leave it there or would you say hold on one second there is a rifle somebody pulled the trigger that somebody is a human being who is a evolutional agent he did it knowingly in if this is in this case it is knowingly right he he had a purpose in killing this man and this is the purpose right and the, and the prosecutor says no i don't see any of that see 
right now the rifle is here and nobody is holding the rifle it is on the table as you can see the rifle is on the table nobody is pulling that trigger and even if somebody pulled that trigger how can i know that that person you know has in, in volition and intention etc etc how can i know that he he meant to kill this person no that doesn't make sense it is the bullet so the the, the dialogue could go on and I suppose we all understand the stupidity in, in all of this, right? In the same way, it is the ugliest of idiocy to forget the lordly command of ignite in order to awake the people of heedlessness and rebellion to a bomb that is enclosed with wisdom and will in the earth, which is a subjugated official, a boat and an airplane, or which is like a boat and an airplane, of the majestic all-powerful one, and to stray into the nature say you know it is natural it's just happening this these things happen in the nature right the the we cannot see the purpose behind this it is not a you know it is not a thing that we can hold and touch and prove therefore there must be no no purpose now we need to internalize this there is no difference between saying that the bullet killed the man and you know we are not going to look for an agent a perpetrator and saying well the magma moved and therefore the ground shook and therefore these people died no god is al muhi and al mumit he is the giver of life and the taker of life he took their lives he took their lives through these means that he uh, created such as the earthquake or it may be an accident whatever it is he took their life through these means and now what makes sense is for us to turn to him and and try to understand why and what next well why is it can be many things right we are and, and we, we also need to understand this is we are not doing this to interrogate him to question him we are not questioning his wisdom or right to take the lives that he gave at the first place the life does not belong to any of us no we ask to see the wisdom to try to understand the wisdom and see the beauty and the mercy that defines his treatment of the of the creation and especially his human subjects his human uh, slaves and when we ask that we understand from his message in the quran the the prophetic message etc that he will compensate them yes this was painful for him for a few minutes perhaps for a moment Yes, this is saddening for those who are left in this world and, and separated from those who moved on. But for those who moved on, there is mercy in this. If they were innocent, perhaps they even earned the, the reward of martyrs. If they were sinners, well, inshallah, this will be an atonement for their sins. If they were disbelievers, well, you cannot get to paradise without uh, belief, right? But you, your your uh, your place in hell may be elevated, so your your punishment is less, and you are glad that you suffered those couple of minutes of uh, you know pain and trouble in this world, and in return you earn this incomparably more valuable reward in the hereafter. so which is better to say it just happened it is nature and natural and you know sorry they died there's nothing we can do about it their lives are wasted or to say hold on hold on you know their lives are in the hands of the all-powerful all-wise all-merciful and he is taking good care of them and he he is just he, is, he doesn't wrong anybody and on top of that he is merciful which is better we need to ask ourselves i mean i personally would like to go with the second one 
if I die a death like that, right? I would like the merciful one to have my life in his hands and treat me accordingly. Altıncı sualin tetinmesi ve haşiyesi. So, completing remarks and a gloss on the sixth question. Ehli dalalet ve ilhad mesleklerini muhafaza ve ehli imanın intibahlarına mukabele ve mümanaat etmek için o derece garip bir temerrüd ve acıyıp bir hamakat gösteriyorlar ki insanı insaniyetten pişman eder. Now the people of misguidance and irreligiosity show such a strange level of obstinacy and such amazing idiocy in order to in order to preserve their ideology and to make to take measures to prevent the awakening of the people of faith that one regrets being a human being like seeing the things the kinds of things that they do knowingly, knowingly or unknowingly like Stadnus is saying like they are human beings and I'm human being I I kind of regret being a human being when I see what they are doing mesela bu ahirde beşerin bir derece umumiyet şeklini alan zulümlü, zulümatlı isyanından, kainat ve anasırı külliye kızdıklarından ve halik arz ve semavat dahi değil hususi bir rububiyet, belki bütün kainatın, bütün alemlerin Rabbi ve hakimi haysiyetiyle, külli ve geniş bir tecelli ile kainatın heyet mecmuasında ve rububiyetin daire-i külliyesinde nevi insanı uyandırmak, ve dehşetli tuğyanından vazgeçirmek ve tanımak istemedikleri kainat sultanını tanıttırmak için emsalsiz kesilmeyen bir su, hava ve elektrikten zelzeleyi, fırtınayı ve harbi umumi gibi umumi ve dehşetli afatı nevi insanın yüzüne çarparak onunla hikmetini, kudretini, adaletini, kayyumiyetini, iradesini ve hakimiyetini pek zahir bir surete gösterdiği halde insan suretinde bir kısım ahmak şeytanlar ise o külli işarat Rabbaniye'ye ve terbiye-i ilahiyeye karşı eblehane bir temerrüdle mukabele edip diyorlar ki tabiattır, bir maddenin patlamasıdır, tesadüfidir, güneşin hararetli elektrikle çarpmasıdır ki Amerika'da 5 saat bütün makineleri durdurmuş ve Kastamonu vilayeti cebbinde ve havasında semayı kızartmış, yangın suretini vermiş diye manasız hezeyanlar ediyorlar. For example, Even though this is a long sentence, listen carefully. <laughs> For example, even though the cosmos and the universal elements, so water, air, soil, fire, um, or you can think of these elements of the periodic table uh, now, right? So whatever it is that this this cosmos is made of, what whatever the elements that, that this cosmos is made of are, right? For example, Even though the cosmos and the universal elements became angry because of humanity's oppressive and dark rebelliousness that became generalized to some extent. And the creator of the earth and the heavens showed in a very apparent fashion, showed his wisdom, power, justice, sustaining will and sovereignty with or through his distinctive attribute of being the Lord and sovereign of all the realms, through a universal and broad self-disclosure on the totality of the cosmos and the universal circle of lordship, in order to awaken the humankind, to dissuade them from their dreadful rebelliousness, and to make the sultan of the cosmos, whom they do not want to recognize, known. How? By slapping the general and dreadful calamities of the earthquake, the hurricane, and the general war, general war, World War II, from the elements of, right, water, air, and electricity, and other things that became involved in these calamities, in an unprecedented and incessant way, it keeps going on, right? Imagine yourself living through World War II. Maybe first year, you can hope like it's going to end soon. Second year, third year, fourth year, in some places, five year, in some places, sixth year. Not ending. 
right slap after slap slap after slap blow after blow blow after blow right he is showing he is showing making it manifest you can you cannot you cannot turn your face away any longer wherever you turn the slap is coming he is showing right even though that is the case some idiotic satans who appear in the form of human beings respond to that universal those universal lordly signs and divine disciplining in a state of foolish obstinacy and say it is the nature it is the explosion of a matter think of the a bomb it is the explosion of a matter it is coincidental it is the sun striking with its heat and that stopped all machinery for five hours in america apparently something like this happened that turned the sky red in the atmosphere and air of the city of Kastamonu, where Stad Nursi was at the time. And, and, and it, you know, it, it is it that gave it the form of a congl con con conflagration, right? It is that uh, striking with its heat, the sun striking with its heat that gave the, the sky of Kastamonu this form of a conflagration. And they utter such mean, meaningless nonsense. Yes, perhaps there was a, uh, you know, solar storm and the heat of the sun increased or may maybe there was a magnetic storm that hit the world which changed the color of the sky. It may have uh, caused machinery to stop and they say that something like this could stop all digital devices on Earth right now. Yes, maybe something like that happened, but where do you put the causality where do you put agency perhaps more more um you know more clearly in our language where do you put agency if you put agency on the sun if you put agency on something called nature nobody knows what it is a construct a human construct then you know, i'm sorry but that's foolish Right, Ustad Nursi is not using this language here in order to insult people. I mean, these people, these words are invented because they carry certain meanings that we encounter in reality. If you attribute anything to something that does not exist, a construct in your mind, like nature, right? That that that a word that you come up with in order to refer to the regularities out there in the cosmos but it is a word after all then i'm sorry it is foolish it is foolish and you know i want to be a human being i want to preserve the distinction of him being a human being by keeping my intellect intact and i i invite you i mean of course i'm helping not my, the listeners of this post this podcast but if, it might be someone out there perhaps who was uh, who has not yet recognized the heedlessness that's involved in the usage of these words and these attributions right i'm inviting you to keep your intellect intact too and recognize the fallacy the um impossibility untenability of these these so-called explanations they don't explain anything dalaletten gelen hadsiz bir cehalet ve zındıkadan neşet eden çirkin bir temerrüt sebebiyle bilmiyorlar ki esbab yalnız birer bahanedirler birer perdedirler dağ gibi bir çam ağacının cihazatını dokumak ve yetiştirmek için bir köy kadar yüz fabrika ve destgah yerine küçücük çekirdeği gösterir işte bu ağaç bundan çıkmış diye Sani'nin o çamdaki gösterdiği bin mucizatı inkar eder misillü. Bazı zahiri sebepleri irae eder. Halık'ın ihtiyar ve hikmetle işleyen, işlenen pek büyük bir fiil rububiyetini hiçe indirir. Bazen gayet derin ve bilinmez ve çok ehemmiyetli bin cihette de hikmeti olan bir hakikate fenni bir nam takar. Güya o nam ile mahiyeti anlaşıldı, adileşti, hikmetsiz manasız kaldı. 
they do not know. Because of an unlimited ignorance emanating from heedlessness and an ugly obstinacy issuing from irreligiosity. They do not know because of an unlimited ignorance emanating from heedlessness and an ugly obstinacy issuing from irreligiosity that the causes are just some pretexts and veils they do not know is it because reality is not knowable is it because reality is not obvious is it because god has not sent his messengers prophets and messengers to show us uh, expose us reality as reality is no not because of that not because of any of that they carry the responsibility of their ignorance they do not know because of an unlimited ignorance emanating from heedlessness and an ugly obstinacy issuing from irreligiosity that the causes are just some pretexts and veils they are not agents they are not even causes if we use the word in its true meaning. Maybe they are means, right? They are some, they are just some pretexts and veils to weave and procure the equipment of a mountain like pine tree. Now imagine a pine tree, a, a big, a giant, and beautiful pine tree, right? It, and it's not, who knows here uses the singular uh, pronoun. Uh, I interpreted this it as that ignorance or that obstinacy, right? It may be uh, referring to they, but because he uses the singular pronoun, I will continue with it. To weave and procure the equipment of a mountain like pine tree, it, that ignorance or obstinacy, shows a tiny seed in place of a hundred factories. And looms right to if you if you think of this as, as you know metaphorically right the tree is made of wood cellulose and then it has these leaves that are like fabric so to make the uh, the trunk and the branches of the tree you need factories and to make the leaves that are like fabrics you need looms right it shows a tiny seed in place of a hundred factories and looms each as large as a village saying here this tree has come out of this this tiny seed it points to some apparent causes as if denying the thousand miracles that the artful maker demonstrates on that pine tree some apparent causes now the problem is pointing to those apparent causes attributing the tree to those apparent causes right it is as if denying the th a thousand miracles that the artful maker demonstrates on that pine on that pine tree that is the purpose it, he is demonstrating his miracles and you are pointing to this tiny seed saying it, it just came out of there it that ignorance or obstinacy reduces a great volitional and wise act of lordship that belongs to the creator to nothing it reduces that volitional and wise act of lordship that belongs to the creator to nothing sometimes it gives a scientific name to a reality that is utterly deep unknown very significant and full of wisdoms in a thousand ways just gives it a name right this is the capillary action okay now we have a name for this thing that you know the liquid climbs up a tiny pipe it is capillary action oh okay it's happening because it is capillary action what does that mean does it explain anything the apple is sweet why because because it is apple what do you mean well the apple is sweet because it is apple because apples are always sweet i understand apples are always sweet okay let's accept that but why why are apples always sweet why are we not trying to find the root cause of this thing why are we trying to why are we not trying to find the causer of causes causes right he is the causer of all causes 
why are we not trying to get there and you know limiting ourselves to this apparent cause it is sweet because it is apple or oh, really sometimes it gives a scientific name to a reality that is utterly deep unknown very significant and full of wisdoms in a thousand ways but just gives it a name as if its quiddity is understood as if as if the nature of this thing that's going on here as if the the the functioning of this what's happening here is understood as if the you know quiddity means like what it is as if what it really is is understood with that name and became ordinary being left devoid being left devoid of wisdom and meaning just giving a name and assuming that that explained everything leaves it devoid of wisdom and meaning and the wisdom and meaning is the wisdom the wisdom in the creation of them all at the first place işte gel belahet ve hamakatin nihayetsiz derecelerine bak ki yüz sahife ile tarif edilse ve hikmetleri beyan edilse ancak tamamıyla bilinecek derin ve geniş bir hakikati meçhuleye bir nam takar. Malum bir şey gibi bu budur der. Mesela güneşin bir maddesi elektrikle çarpmasıdır. Here, come. Look at the unlimited levels of foolishness and idiocy. And I'm sorry again. These words, uh, human beings came up with these words because they do, uh, they, they, they do uh, signify realities that exist in life. And Ustad Nursi is not using this to insult people. This is not an insult. It is the, it is an indication of the severity of the matter that he is talking about. These are not insignificant things. We should not go about our lives thinking, you know, so yeah, there's a creator, so what? No, we are here to serve that creator. We will all die. We will all die. This, this life is not the be all and all. We will all die and we will stand before him. We will be taken into account as to whether we recognized him, whether we worshipped him, whether we served him, whether we were good to his cre creatures, whether we followed his commands and abstained from, from his proscriptions. Whether we loved him whether we loved his messenger, whether we love the slaves that love him. All of these we will have to answer. We cannot just go about, you know, looking at the tree and seeing O tree and looking at the star and seeing, saying O star and that's it. You know, yeah, that is just a star. It, it shines in the sky and that's it. No, that's not it. The apple is not just sweet because it's an apple. There is purpose, intent, design, will, volution, power involved in the apple being sweet and those taste buds that, that perceive sweetness being put on your tongue and that sensation of pleasure when you taste when your taste buds taste that apple being put in your entity you need to recognize that I, mean, I need to we need to recognize that right subhanallah here come look at the unlimited levels of foolishness and idiocy that they give a name to a deep and broad unknown reality that can only be known completely if describing a hundred if described in a hundred pages and its wisdoms are expounded there they say this is this see see the explanation this is this liquid is climbing up tiny pipes i mean as if uh, defying gravity why is it happening this is this this is capillary action Oh, I see. Okay, it is capillary reaction. That's why the liquid is climbing up. No. And it doesn't solve the problem if you, you know, carry this one, you know, one step further and as attributed to, to to some other material circumstance. 
and went all the way down to the functioning of the electrons and protons and explained it at the tiniest uh, you know, level of, of, of physics. No, that doesn't solve the problem. There is a power behind this, that's behind all of these that are happening. And unless you recognize that power, you can't explain anything. You just keep giving names to things. Here, come, look at the unlimited levels of foolishness and idiocy that they give a name to a deep and broad unknown reality which can only be known completely if described and its wisdoms are expounded in a hundred pages and, and then they say, this is this, as if it is a known thing. For instance, this is a substance of the sun striking with electricity. Hem birer irade ikulliye ve birer ihtiyara am ve birer hakimiyeti neviyenin unvanları bulunan ve adetullah namıyla yad edilen fıtri kanunların birisine hususi ve kasti bir hadise rububiyeti irca eder. O irca ile onun nispetini irade ihtiyar eden keser. Sonra tutar tesadüfe tabiata havale eder. Ebu Cehil'den ziyade muzaaf bir echeliyet gösterir. Bir neferin veya bir taburun zaferli harbini bir nizam ve kanun askeriye isnat edip kumandanından, padişahından, hükümetinden ve kasti harekattan alakasını keser misillü asi bir divane olur. Also, they reduce a specific and purposeful act of lordship to one of the laws of innate nature that are called God's custom and are each appellations for a universal will, a general choice. And, and sovereignty over a species. Let's read this again. They reduce a specific and purposeful act of lordship to one of the laws of innate nature, innate nature, the way things are created, that are called God's custom. For instance, what can be one of those, you know, God's customs? Well, what they call gravity, right? Gravity is a specific and purposeful act of lordship but they reduce it to one of the laws of innate nature that are called God's custom and are each appellations for a universal will. A will that is universally uh, effective. A general choice, a divine choice, right? A choice that the, the, uh, God has made uh, to be generally effective. And sovereignty over a species. Like gravity is sovereign over the species of what inanimate beings, over the species of in, inanimate beings, maybe the, the, or, or physical beings. There may be beings out there that are not subject to gravity. Like even light is subject to gravity, but there may there there are metaphysical beings perhaps uh, that we don't know that are not subject to gravity, or not everything is subject to gravity to the same extent, but. The physical beings that we know as a species, right, are subject to gravity. And there is a universal will, a will, a divine will that has willed this to be so. God has made a choice and has generalized the, the, the outcome of this choice in the species. And it indicates his sovereignty over the species. He is ruling that species. He is ruling inanimate beings. They cannot get out of this rule, this choice that he has made for them of gravity. You know, human beings need oxygen. We, uh, we, we burn energy with oxygen and we use that in order to, you know, fulfill our bodily functions. That is the divine will general choice and indicator of sovereignty on the species of human beings or you know, animals, etc. So what they do, they reduce a specific and purposeful act of lordship. This is a specific and purposeful act of lordship to one of the laws of innate nature that are called God's custom. It should be called God's custom. They, they, they don't even call it God's custom. They just call it gravity or you know oxygenation or whatever. And are each appellations for a universal will, a general choice and sovereignty over a species. Through this reduction, they cut its relation to volitional will then hand it over to coincidence or what they call nature. 
they demonstrate an ignorance that is way worse than that of Abu Jahl. And Abu Jahl, of course, is uh, really evil man in Mecca, who was one of the arch enemies of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And although he was wise, he used his uh, intelligence, he used his smartness, right, in the way of promoting evil and disbelief and misguidance. They demonstrate an ignorance, so maybe they know a lot. They have studied a lot. They have analyzed each and every element on the per periodical table. They have, uh, you know, developed telescopes that can see so far that they have counted billions of stars and named them in the atmosphere. But, but, you know, Abu Jahl was smart, intelligent. Perhaps he knew lots of poetry, I don't know. But they demonstrate an ignorance that is way worse than that of Abu Jahl. Because, well, if you collect so much data and, and attribute to it false meaning, by collecting more data, you only increase your ignorance. You know less about reality. The more you know, the less you know about reality. The more information you have accumulated, rather we should say, the less you know about reality as reality is. They demonstrate an ignorance that is way worse than that of Abu Jahl. They become a rebellious lunatic, similar to the example of cutting a soldier's or a battalion's victorious battle from their commander's salt and government and, and purposeful action by attributing it to some order or a, or a military law. You know, the soldiers were so brave and they you know defeated the enemy or defended the country in such a such a such efficient way because according to the military code they are supposed to uh, you know run when when they are they receive the command run come on come on that's not the case that's not how we understand these things that's not that's not how it works that's not how reality is hem meyvedar bir ağacın bir çekirdekten icadı gibi bir tırnak kadar bir odun parçasından çok mucizatlı bir usta yüz okka muhtelif tamları yüz arşın muhtelif kumaşları yapsa bir adam o odun parçasını gösterip dese bu işler tabi ve tesadüfi olarak bundan olmuş o ustanın harika sanatlarını hünerlerini hiçe indirse ne derece bir hamakattir aynen öyle de also similar to bringing a fruitful tree into existence from a fruit pit if a miracle working master makes a hundred okkas that that's a, a measure of weight of kilos a hundred kilos or pounds of various foods and a hundred arshins again a measure of uh, length meters uh, f f uh, feet a hundred feet of various fabrics from a piece of wood as big as a fingernail a piece of wood as big as a fingernail right so there's a miracle working master he takes a little piece of wood as big as a fingernail and then he he he uses it to make hundreds of pounds of various foods and hundreds of uh, feet or meters of various fabrics right and someone pointed to that piece of wood and said, as if this is the case, as if someone pointed to that piece of wood and said, these affairs, all these things, result from this piece of wood naturally and coincidentally. And thus, that person reduced the wondrous arts and skills of that master, that, that miracle working master to nothing. Did not even recognize, did not even acknowledge, oh, are you here, right? You know, he did not even acknowledge that the master is there. Just looked at the piece of wood, looked at the, you know, hundreds of pounds of food and hundreds of meters of fabric and said, oh, they came out of this little piece of wood. And thus reduced the wondrous arts and skills of that master to nothing. What an idiocy that would be. And then Sadhguru says, in the same way, and then we have ellipsis, i.e., you know, compare this to the previous examples. The, the, the, 
the, the, the, this is already explained. Attributing uh, events in the realm to causes in the realm is a similar, a similar, um, let's say foolishness, similar to thinking that all that stuff can have come out of this tiny little piece of wood, the fruit pit. We need to find the causer of causes. Yet in Yusual, so we are moving on to the seventh question. This is shorter. Inshallah, we will end soon. Bu hadiseyi arziye, bu memleketin ahali İslamiyesine bakması ve onları hedef etmesi neyle anlaşılıyor? Ve neden Erzincan ve İzmir taraflarına daha ziyade ilişiyor? Seventh question. How is it understood that this event of the earth looks to the Muslim, Muslim population of this land and targets them? And why does the impact the vicinities of Erzincan and Izmir? Again, uh, we, we should remember from the beginning that this was written about uh, two actual earthquakes that happened in Turkey in the 1940s in Erzincan and Izmir. El Cevap Bu hadise hem şiddetli kışta, hem karanlıklı gecede, hem dehşetli soğukta, hem Ramazan'ın hürmetini tutmayan bu memlekete mahsus olması, hem tahribatından intibaha gelmediklerinden hafifçe gafilleri uyandırmak için o zelzelerin devam etmesi gibi çok emarelerin delaletiyle bu hadise ehli imanı hedef edip onlara bakıp namaza ve niyaza uyandırmak için sarsıyor ve kendisi de titriyor. Answer It is indicated by many symptoms such as the occurrence of this event in severe winter, in the darkness of the night, in dreadful cold, and specifically in this land where people do not respect the Ramadan and the continuation of the earthquake lightly to wake those heedless people up when they are not awakened by its first initial destruction, that this event targets the people of, according to all of these and perhaps many others too, that these are symptoms, right? This, you cannot say this in 100%. We are in, in a, uh, in the, in the, territory of interpretation but this is how we treat our our uh, lower souls when something happens we try to take a lesson from that and we tell our lower soul or our people right the people that we are in the position of admonishing look take heed take heed this this is happening there there is a message in this for you right and you know do we need symptoms you know take a look if, if, if there are these symptoms we take them seriously right this is how we interpret these matters so that we can take heed and improve so that it is of benefit to to our uh to to our ultimate end right according to these symptoms this event targets the people of faith looks to them and shakes them to awaken them to perform their prayers and to supplicate and it tremors itself too. Biçare Erzincan gibi yerlerde daha ziyade sarsmasının iki vecihi var. That it shakes even more in places like helpless or tremors even more in helpless Erzincan has two aspects. Biri hataları az olmak cihetiyle temizlemek için tacil edildi. One, because they have few faults, it is expedited for purification. So this, we need to go back to the 10th word and understand what exactly this means. But very briefly, big crimes, and actually we mentioned it earlier in this treatise too, big crimes, right? Uh, or, or let's put this way, small crimes can be, can be uh, dealt with in wherever they happened, right? You know, you, in the house, let's say you have uh, two kids, one of them did something wrong to the other and you know made the, the elder child, made the younger child cry, right? You can deal with this in the household. Perhaps you can, you know, chastise the older child and talk to the child, etc. Do something about it in the household. You don't take this to the court, right? But big crimes need big courts. You know, some crimes need to be taken all the way to the Supreme Court or you know, need to be taken to the um, criminal justice system. You cannot deal with it in the household. You cannot deal with it in the neighborhood. You cannot deal with it in the workplace. Some crimes 
necessitate the justice system to, to you know kick in right so the helpless people of Erzincan like they are they, they I mean they, they they there were many innocent people among them and they are uh, you know it's a more or less mostly a conservative place known to be a conservative place right it shakes even more in places like helpless Erzincan because they have few faults and the purification of their faults are expedited in this world it is not it is not uh, left for being taken care of in the hereafter ikincisi o gibi yerlerde kuvvetli ve hakikatli iman muhafızları ve İslamiyet hamileri az veya tam mağlup olmak fırsatıyla ehli zındıkanın orada tesirli bir merkezi faaliyet tesisleri cihetiyle en evvel oraları tokatladı ihtimali var now we don't no, or I don't know exactly what was happening at the time uh, in in the in the uh, society in Izmir or Erzincan, right? But start say second, it is possible that it dealt a slap on them first because strong and truthful preservers of faith and defenders of Islam are either few in places like that or they're about to be defeated completely giving opportunity to the people of irreligiosity to establish an influential center of activity so perhaps there was this conspiracy going on uh, you know to institute something in this relatively conservative place like Erzincan um, and, and take take advantage of the fact that perhaps the scholars of the place were dying or being uh, moved on to other places etc something was happening there that could put these innocent people in the danger in the sense that they would be uh, deprived of of the admonishment uh, and edification that was coming from the preservers of faith and defenders of islam in the place and they were they were going to perhaps lose their faith what do you prefer uh, you know to lose your faith or to die in an earthquake and find yourself in the hands of the merciful one who is going to compensate you for the property you lost uh, for the the pain you that you endured as a result of that right if if i lose my faith may god protect may god protect i'm then looking forward to eternal punishment eternal torment so in order to avoid that i would certainly pick this لا يعلم الغيب إلا الله and this is the end Ustad Nursi finishes by saying لا يعلم الغيب إلا الله none knows the unseen other than God Allah and this is um, paraphrased from a verse لا يعلم الغيب إلا الله أي he is leaving in the end uh, this room for alternative interpretations Right, the the reasons he gave to us about what happened in Erzincan, these are interpretations. The actual wisdom behind this thing may be different. There may be more than one wisdoms. We are looking for wisdoms in why they, things are happening. We are looking for meanings in why things are happening, and there may be more than one meanings, right? But what cannot be is the attribution of causality, agency, of possible beings i.e things that are happening in this physical realm that we see or in the created realm right to other created beings because no possible being can exist in and of itself and what that means is that if it cannot exist in and of itself how can it cause something else to come into existence right the wisdom we can think, uh, we can try to deduce and infer, and it is better to leave this inference to, you know, uh, you know scholars, people with pure heart, uh, people who put what God wants from us at the first place, in the first place, right? But beyond that, when, when it comes to this matter of, uh, theological interpretation of these theological matters we need to firmly firmly ground ourselves to understand and to to keep in mind as we go about the world that God 
is the creator of everything and every uh, relationship every interaction between everything if the magma moved and that movement moved the surface of the earth right god created the magma god created the surface of the earth and it is god who creates the interaction between the magma and the surface of the earth otherwise the magma is just what it is it has no agency or will or volition or intent subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim wa akhir dawahu man alhamdulillah rabbil alamin and by the way ustad nursi is uh ending this uh, treatise with this uh, verse 2 so we are, we, i'm not reading it only as a dua at this uh, point let's read the translation glory be to you we have no knowledge other than that which you have taught us indeed you are all knowing all wise this is surah al-baqarah the second chapter of the quran verse 32 subhanaka illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim wa akhir dawahu min alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha